range of motion. So Joe. Okay, so any symptoms, Joe? Any, yeah. any symptoms right now? So let me have you bring your chin down towards your chest for me, Joe, as far as you can. There you go. Any problem there? Well, actually, should we go? Should we do upper cervical today, or should we leave that till next week? It's up to me. What do you feel? What do I feel? <laughs> All right, let's just let's just do lower cervical. We'll see how much time, and then we'll go back to upper cervical. Okay, so go ahead and bring your chin down towards your chest again, Joe. Hold there. So I'm going to stabilize his CT junction. Come around the back of the occiput and just do a, a kind of a, a almost like a bowing, like the lumbar spine, oscillating a little bit. How you doing, Joe? You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then come on back up. Any problem with that, Joe? Okay. Okay. How yes? do you find those um, CT junction? The cervical thoracic. So just putting my hand, just kind of putting my hand here, kind of stabilizing that. That way, I don't just pull him forward, and then I just take him straight into flexion. This is just active range of motion. We're this is do? active range of motion. Yep. Okay. Now, Joe, I want you to turn to your left for me, okay. and then come on back. Any problem with that? So maybe turn to your left. So you notice I'm getting close. And here, I want to stabilize his thoracic spine, and then I'm going to grab on his uh, zygomatic arch, stabilizing his thoracic, and going to add overpressure. So I can take him quite a bit more there. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then come on back. Okay. So I don't want to do this because then I'm going to get a little bit of thoracic. So I'm trying to control his thoracic and really taking him into end range, his end range rotation. All right. And let me have you turn to the right. Any problem with that? Come on back. Any symptoms with that? No. Let me have you turn to the right again. Again, stabilizing his thoracic, grab, grabbing on the zygomatic arch, and then turning him. So he's a little stiffer here. Any pain with that? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. And then come on back. So it's rotation. Okay. Now let me have you look up towards the sky as far as you can. Any problem with that? Then come on back down. Any increase, decrease, any change? No? So let me have you look up. So here, be careful with this one. So here I'm going to grab his chin. Grab the front part of his head. Elbows is, is, is in the back of his thoracic spine. And I'm going to do kind of almost taking him back into extension. So I'm just going to oscillate, kind of feel his resistance where it can come on. You doing okay, Joe? Mm -hmm. Taking him to his end range. You all right? Yeah. And then come on back up. And I'll usually help him back up, maybe do a little bit of like traction. It's compressive, so we're trying to, to uh, provoke their symptoms, okay? And if I haven't, if I didn't provoke it into extension, then I want to overpress it. All right. I'm not going to necessarily overpress my 70 and 80 year old grandmas. So, you know, be careful with extension and lateral flexion. So go ahead and bring your left ear towards your left shoulder. And usually, I would face them. I'm just going to show it this way. I want to hold their shoulder and then take them to end range. And then come on back up. Any symptoms with that? Go ahead, um, side, kind of bring your right ear towards your right shoulder. And then come on back up. Any problem with that? No. Do that again for me. Stabilize his, his uh, left shoulder. And then take him into yoga. And then come on back up. Okay. Have I forgotten anything? A oh, quadrant. Okay. So if, if those movements didn't provoke quadrant, um, I mean, didn't provoke their symptoms. <laughs> Keep writing. Didn't provoke quadrant. <laughs> their notes will make perfect sense when you go home. <laughs> um, so if, if just like the lumbar spine, if those, those plain, uniplanar movements did not provoke his symptoms, then I want to take it to um, uh, lower cervical quadrant. And so lower cervical quadrant is basically extension 
side flexion left, rotation left to the same side. And so usually I will kind of sometimes just help facilitate the movement or I'll tell them, I want you to look at the, the uh, upper corner of the ceiling for me. Can you, can you go ahead and do that? And so they'll go into that combined movement of a quadrant position. Now to overpress, again, be careful with this. I'm not going to do it real vigorous with uh, Joseph. So you want to stabilize the thoracic, come here on the zygomatic arch, and it's a compression. So I'm doing that. Okay? All right? So it's coming up top and doing that overpress. Okay. So you're um, providing pressure in both hands? Yeah. Well, I'm kind of stabilizing here and putting pressure. So I'm, I'm almost, yeah, putting a little bit of pressure, but kind of stabilizing and then putting pressure here into his, into his neck area. You okay? Yeah. And then go ahead and look towards the corner on the right. And so I'll, I'll facilitate, so he's really stiff on this side. And then here and here, and then the quadrant's right there. Okay? So you're pressing into extension as well? So I'm kind of, kind of going into extension, rotation, and side so like Kind of the whole combined movement. Doing. Yes, kind of doing all that. Yep. And so it's a very compressive force, narrowing that intervertebral foramen. So a lot of times you get those patients who, are, who have uh, maybe stenosis on that side. That should really flare them up. And I think McGee, they may, it's a spurling test? Yeah, that, that you will see. But in Maitland's term, it's a lower cervical quadrant test.